And that's a conversation, you know, that's kind of got, that's going to kind of spin us into our next conversation about Pep, Pat Bev doing the ESPN NBA car wash, right? What gets missed in a lot of these NBA conversations is the politics of the game. You know, Pat Bev talked about CP3 being viewed in a certain light by the media and in another light by players. I got some confirmation that there are some players, good NBA players, who view CP3 more like Pat Bev does than what Stephen A. Smith and Colin Cowherd does, right? Yeah. I'm not saying either side is right because the, the product on the court says that you know, CP3 is the best point guard of this generation. I know Steph has championships, but he really doesn't play point guard. But when it comes to traditional point guards, I mean, CP3, Stockton, Magic, Isaiah, like of people who played while we were living, breathing organisms. I'm not saying watching, but living, breathing organisms. These are the guys we're talking about. And CP3 for, I don't know, he came in the league in 05. He's the last of the Mohicans. I mean. Yeah, like Darren Williams washed out. Rondo is. <clears throat> well, wasn't as good offensively. Wasn't as good played. offensively. And now he's 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 threatening people and shit. And I don't even want to talk about Rondo. Right. But. But. I, I think what Pat Bev is saying. It needs to be taken more seriously than it is. And I flip flopped on this because. At first, I was killing Pat Beverly, but then I had a conversation with somebody who who's in the know, you know, and they told me some stuff, and I go, shit, man, you're right. Like, yeah, Matt Barnes is going to defend him because he played with him in L.A. J.J. Reddick's going to defend him because he played with him in L.A., and they're good friends, and they competed through throughout the circuit growing up, right? What about but, Danny Green? Huh? Danny Green just defended him. He didn't, I don't think they played together. No, they didn't. And, and Or was that just more of a Danny Green has an issue with Pat Bev? Who knows? They play together either. Who knows what it is, but Danny well, Green could just be saying that. Danny I Green's think, also a defensive player. Danny Green at one point had made the all-NBA defensive team just like Pat Bev. They man, probably Danny, Danny, Danny Green, if the, if the Spurs win the 13 finals, he's finals MVP. Let me see. Let me see. But, I just want to hear Go but ahead, the good. point that I'm making is I think that because some people have a perspective, they should not dismiss someone else's perspective who is right there. There are conversations that that Pat Bev is privy to because of guys he's played with because he's been on that court that outsiders aren't privy to. There is a feeling that he may have that he's not privy to. Now, I'm not going to sit here and like, yeah, CP3 gave Pat Bev buckets last year in the playoffs, and Pat Bev got mad and pushed him. Pat Bev never said he couldn't play offense. And we have to take that stuff into right. consideration, like too. There, there is some personal stuff there. But, like, if you listen to Pat Bev talk that. about – have you listened to Pat Bev talk about CP3, like, on J.J. Reddick's podcast? Like, you got to listen to, like – I think – I didn't listen to the podcast. I only have seen the the the, the car wash clip. Okay, so what what Pat Bev is doing? So let's 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 break this shit out, right? Pat Bev is saying things to get ESPN a number so that he can get a job when he retires. Yeah, he wants to be like we know that Draymond will easily slide into TNT. Like he's yeah, he takes, really gonna work for TNT. He takes Chuck's job. Like that's already. We didn't know like a guy like Perk and Paul. Those guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on to them because that's a whole other topic. I want to stay on Pat Bev. We're going to get to those other guys. Well, I'm just saying how those guys got the ESPN, but go ahead. But with Pat Bev, I think he's – he's. Fi- think about the first time we did a pod together, like in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Then think about when we first started doing this weekly. Think about how much better we've gotten just by doing it regularly. Yeah. Pat Bev is saying some wild shit that he maybe shouldn't say. And he's also saying some stuff that's super valid that, hey, you asked for the player's perspective. I'm giving you the true player's perspective because people forget that Pat Bev was a bucket before he got to the NBA, but being grimy got him to the NBA. So, again, 
people change roles in order to, to keep a check. Absolutely. Like Tony Allen was a bucket before he came to the league, and Doc Rivers said, hey, we paid Paul Pierce to score points. If you want to stay on this team, you 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 get a bottle of Paul Pierce. And 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 what did Tony Allen do? He played defense, just like Pat Bev played and defense. What? And guess what? He became a great one. Because even as a Kobe fan, I remember when they asked Kobe about that. He said Tony Allen. When he talked about guys that he said there was a guy that could you know, not only do his job, but get under my skin even a little. It was him. You know, not Rajah Bill, not, um, you know, I remember Denver one year, they tried to put Kenyon Martin on Kobe, and I get it because he's bigger and athletic. I don't know what the hell that was about. And what I guess Hello, on him. Utah, when they, they played Utah on a conference trials once, I guess it was AK 47 on him. But like, and and Andre Carolingo won a defensive player of the year, right? I, I'm almost certain he did. He you know, I don't I don't place much value on that award. I do, I don't, I do, but yeah, Drew it. Holiday, Drew Holiday said something to Marcus Smart in that series. I know they lost. Drew Holiday said something to Marcus Smart, and I go, Yeah, bro. Yeah, y'all really thought Marcus Smart was a good defensive player, though. Like, I mean, I'm looking at this now. They're playing. I got it on the screen. What's the score? It's 18 to 13 on my screen, six minutes in the first. I need the under in the first half. So that's why I'm so intent. Who's my winning? Bet, uh, Miami's up five. Now, I've got Boston for the game, but I have the under in the first half. Okay. So as long as I can get my under, I'm not really worried about. Uh, Oh, foul on. You know, and what my question. Go ahead. Do you think Pat Bev violated the code? See, because I'm not in the NBA, I don't know. But I do this one thing I do know because I I literally know a current NBA player, right? That I've known my entire life that you've said his name enough on this podcast. Well, I've actually talked about him about league. Not players in the league. Like I'm like, man, who's the hardest guy you had to guard? Yeah. Like, we I've had that conversation too, because th- this same person. Well, I, we all know who it is if you listen to the show. It's Colin Sexton. Yeah. It's not to call him out like this, but even for me, he said I asked him about the best ball brother, and he thought that Leangelo was. That was honestly his take. He said he said honestly he said he thought he balled harder than. Well, no, I believe it because if you listen to KD talk about Michael Beasley. He was like, bro, like if B, he like if B Easy got put in the right spot, B Easy would have been a problem. And again, people forget about the politics of sports, um, because if you're a five star, if you're a five star coming out of high school, you're gonna get a second contract more than likely if you get draft if you get drafted in the lottery, and, and you can suck. And the thing with Leangelo too is obviously his dad. There's his dad, like. Lam- when when he when he rose to when that ball family rose to prominence, Lonzo was already booked as a top guy because he's at UCLA and like yeah they're like, bro they're like yeah this nigga can ball like like he's a triple double <laughs> like nigga basically you know he not he not gonna give you thirty a game but like man you want to talk about eighteen nine and nine it's that nigga he's right there I promise and that's kind of look that's kind of his game. Um, a little bit that is kind of his game but like at the same time like I don't know but but that's one of the things I talked about with him but he's also let me know like even with that Cavs shit he came to the Cavs post LeBron right like he literally that's what he did draft night he said LeBron stay LeBron hadn't even decided to go to the Lakers yeah Bron texted him it's like welcome to the family type shit yeah and uh and now a uh, funny story about that is that obviously Colin has signed a clutch too. I don't know if you knew that, but he signed a clutch. And so uh, he's like, about to get paid. He just switched. Well, we're about see, he's coming off an injury in this team. Who who, who, who is he signed to? The playoffs, but they were the eight seed going. Who's he signed to? Who's he signed to? Clutch. Oh, no, he's gonna get paid. I'm not even worried about Colin getting paid. The question just is the Cavs aren't gonna give him a five year, hundred million dollar contract. For Colin, this is my biggest worry. I hate that he got hurt on a contract here. It's like the worst thing that could have happened. It really hurts because 
But he's a, he's a restricted free agent too. So like basically, but, teams can d- dictate his value. He can do the I two for one. But now what hurts Colin is that he was playing he was playing good numbers basketball, and then he goes down and they're almost a playoff team, and it looks like they got better without him. But really, they added they added Evan Mobley. Uh, Darius Garland had another Evan year. Mobley was 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 arguably the rookie of the year, right? And Darius Garland did naturally without Colin, his game, he was going to have better numbers. Yeah. But he did step up. And then the fact that he was an all-star and then it was uh, Allen's second year, it, it, it didn't, it didn't help him out. I don't think. I don't it didn't think- help him out, but it, I don't think that it was Colin. I don't. Yeah. Him not being there wasn't the reason they weren't better. Yeah, no, so absolutely was, not. I, Cause you 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 sent to Colin Devin Devin Booker numbers. Yeah, I did. I I sent a blind test to everybody from a uh, year of Colin, and those oh Tyler Hero just blocked the shit out of Marcus Smart. Tyler Hero can't block my shot. I swear to God, he just pimped uh, Smart, and they called a foul. But nonetheless. Um, Hell of a block, though. It really was. What an athletic play. Who said white man can't jump? <laughs> what? They ain't seen Tyler Hero or fucking Pat Connaughton. But nonetheless, it was definitely a clean block, too. Oh, they should challenge that low key. 